Hello, I'm Mark from ExcelOffTheGrid.com and in this video we're looking at how we can split the contents of a cell into multiple cells. You see, there are many circumstances where we receive information with multiple data points in a single cell. This often occurs when the original intention for the data is slightly different from how we intend to use it. And in those circumstances, we often need to split the cell into its constituent parts. And that's what we'll be looking at in this video. We'll be doing this using a very simple data set. On the screen, you can see a list of 10 names, a first name and a last name. And we want to split these into two separate columns. Now, if we have just a few cells in our data set, it's not that big a problem. We can do it manually. But if we have hundreds or thousands of cells, that's not really an option. We need to find a better way. Well, thankfully, there's a variety of Excel features that we can use, and we'll be covering four of them in this post. Now, our data set is pretty clean. There's a first name and a last name, and they're all separated by spaces. Unfortunately, that won't always be the case. And depending on your specific scenario, one of the methods we'll look at may be better than some of the others. And that's why we're covering four possible options so that you can select the best one for your specific scenario. So let's start with our first method, text to columns. Text to columns is a feature that hides in plain sight. It's on the ribbon as its own icon, but unless you know it's there and what it does, you may not have used it, but for a simple data transformation, it's perfect. So let's start by selecting our cells and going up to the data ribbon and clicking text to columns. In our data, we have a space between each of the names and we want to separate at that space character and that's known as a delimiter. So I've got delimited selected and then I'll click next. It then brings up step two and asks us what our delimiter is. For our scenario, it's a space. So I'll select that. There are some other options there, such as tab, semicolon, or comma. But even if you've got a different delimiter, you can select the other option and enter your text into that box. But space is fine for us, so I'll click next again. It then asks what kind of format do we want our output to be in. General is fine for our needs. And it also asks where we want to put the output. I'll select B2 on the same sheet and then click finish. Wow, look at that. All it takes is a couple of clicks and it's done. That was nice and quick and simple, wasn't it? Which is what makes text to columns such a great feature. However, there's a few things I should make you aware of about text to columns. Firstly, text to columns is not a dynamic feature, which means if the source data changes, then we need to rerun this same process over again. Also, text to columns works best on data that's in a very consistent format. For example, if some of our names contained two spaces rather than one, then text to columns might not give us the result that we are expecting. Okay, let's move on to our second method, which is called flash fill. Flash fill is a fantastic feature that was introduced in Excel 2013. Now it's possible that you may have used flash fill already without even being aware of it. It can run in two different ways. It can run in the background, where Excel tries to find patterns in our data automatically and make suggestions, or we can trigger it manually ourselves at specific times. We'll look at both of these. We'll use the background execution to get the first name and then the manual execution to get the last name. For this to work, the data we want to apply flash fill to must be on the left. So I'll select cell B2, and then I'm just going to type out the first name. I'll press return, but nothing's happened so far. But as soon as we start to type out the second name, Excel now jumps into actions and gives us recommendations. So it understands the pattern that we've got, and it says, I think you want the first name. To accept the recommendation, we can press tab or enter. I'll press enter, and there we go. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Okay, now let's get the second name. So I'll select another row, and again, the data must be on the left. I'll just type out Lewis, which is the last name for this specific row. 
I'll then select all the cells. Then from the home menu, I can come across to fill and then flash fill. And that's it, we're done. Both the first name and last names have been put into separate columns. But before we move on to our next method, there's just a few things I want to make you aware about flash fill as well. So while flash fill is very good at identifying patterns, it will not always return the values that we're expecting. There does need to be some logical pattern to the values that flash fill can find. As a feature, it's better than text to columns because it doesn't just rely on a delimiter or a fixed column width. Instead, it's intelligent enough to extract parts of text strings. But just like text to columns, if our source data changes, then we do need to run the process all over again. If we use the manual method and flash fill isn't able to find a pattern, it will give us an error message. So for example, if I were to type up here cheese, and down here burger, I can select those cells, then again from the home menu, fill and flash fill, and unsurprisingly, Excel brings up an error message because it doesn't understand from the words cheese and burger how they relate to the data on the left. And the error message there says, we looked at all the data next to your selection and didn't see a pattern for filling in values for you. So let's just click OK to close that. And now let's move on to method number three, which is Power Query. This has been natively available since Excel 2016. However, prior to that, there was an add-in that you could download for Excel 2010 and 2013. So let's see Power Query in action. We can start by selecting any cell within our data. Then from the ribbon, we select data, and then from table slash range. Excel recognizes that our data is not currently in a table structure, so it asks us to create a table. It's correctly recognized that our data is in cells A1 to A11, and we also have a header row at the top. So we can click OK on that. Now the Power Query editor is opened. We've got our column selected, and from the home menu of that, we can go to Split Columns and Buy Delimiter. There are lots of delimiters in here that we can select. We've got Space selected correctly. We can split at the leftmost, the rightmost, or each occurrence of the delimiter. We only have one space in each of our data points, so it doesn't make any difference. So I'll click OK on that. And now our names have been split into first name and last name. And before we do anything else, let me just go back to the split column options. As you can see, there's lots of other options in there. So depending on the complexity of your data, there's so much more in there that you could use. I'm just gonna double click these and change the headers. So first name and last name. Right, now let's get our data back into Excel. So from the home menu, we can go close and load and select close and load two. From the import data window, I'll select an existing worksheet into cell C1, and that's going to load as a table. Then I'll click OK. And there we go. Now our data has been loaded back into Excel. Just like the other methods, there's a few things I want to make you aware of. For Power Query, if our source data changes or more data is added to the table, we can simply go to the Data tab and click Refresh All and our data will update. So let's just try that in action. So Doris Green, let's say she changed to Doris Brown. When I click Refresh All, as you can see, our data refreshes and that value changes to Doris Brown. Another thing to note is that this method will change the source data into an Excel table, even if you don't want it to. As I mentioned before, there's lots of options within Power Query. So anytime you want to do any kind of data manipulation, it is a really good option to choose. Now let's move on to our fourth method, which is standard Excel formulas. Formulas give us the ability to split text using any rules that we can program ourselves into our formulas. 
So while they're very powerful and very flexible, it does come down to our own skill rather than using a point and click interface. The useful functions for splitting text in this way are left, right, mid, len, search, find, and substitute. Because we've got a reasonably clean data set, we're just going to use four of those now to separate our text into two separate columns. So I'll click here in cell B2. And the first function we're going to use is the search function. So equals search. And as you can see there, search returns the number of the character at which a specific character or text string is first found. So I'll enter an open bracket. And the first character we want to find is the space character because that's our delimiter. So I want to find the space within the value of our text. And I'll close that bracket there and press return. And that's returned the value of eight because the space is the eighth character of cell A2. I can then wrap the left function around that. And as you can see there, left returns the specified number of characters from the start of a text string. So open bracket, I'll select A2 again, because that's our text, press a comma, and then close that bracket and press return. So by using left and search, we've extracted the first eight characters from cell A2. Now the thing you can't see is the fact that in cell B2, that value contains the space that is currently after the name. So what we'll do is that we'll take the search, which calculated to eight, and we'll minus one from that, so that we only get the first seven characters. I'll press return, I'll click it, and then I'll double click the fill handle to copy down, and there we have our first name extracted. Okay, then we just need to get the last name. For that, I'm going to use the len function to start with. So len returns the number of characters in a text string. It takes one argument, which is the text. So I'll select cell A2, close that bracket, and press return. So that's telling me that cell A2 contains 13 characters. From that, if I take away my search, Again, I want to find my space character. That now returns a value of five. So we had 13 characters and we took away the eight characters, which were the first name and the space. And that leaves us with five characters, which represent the last name. Then all we do is wrap a write function around that. So the write from cell A2, comma, close that, press return. And now we have the last name there in cell C2. Select cell C2, double click the fill handle, and there we go. Now, just a few notes about using formulas. They are the only option in this video that are fully dynamic, which means that if the original data changes, the formula result updates automatically. So let's take Doris Green again change her name to Doris Brown, press return, and instantly the result of our formula changes to Doris Brown. The other thing to know is that depending on the complexity of the text string to be split, these formulas can become quite complex. So it really comes down to your skill. So there we have it. With these four methods, you can split a cell into its constituent parts. And which option you choose is entirely dependent on your specific scenario. So it's important that you familiarize yourselves with all the options, then you'll be able to make the best decision. Well, that's everything from me. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, why not click on one of the links on the screen now? And don't forget to subscribe and get notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.